Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be breaking down how Pete Davidson gets girls. Okay. His dating strategy explained. This is a question I've been getting a lot. Why do so many girls want to get with Pete Davidson? There's a lot of memes about it. There's a lot of videos I've seen trending on TikTok that have been like, boys, we need to have a meeting. How come guys like Pete Davidson are the most desired by women? Our strategies aren't working. We need to stop lifting weights and become goofy dorks. And then we'll start getting girls. Funny stuff like this has been going around. And Pete Davidson is definitely an interesting case. I would say that um, he is an outlier as far as what a traditional masculine attractive man should be and stand for and look like. He's definitely an example of an outlier. But I'm going to break down exactly why so many women want to be with Pete Davidson, why he's been dating all these high level celebrities and why he has become a meme and motivating a lot of guys to dress, act and look like him thinking that they're going to get girls, but it's not going to work for them. Okay. I like a dude who his life up and then gets it back together. Ah. Perfect. Now, before doing anything, make sure you hit the like button. The only way other people see this video is if you hit the like button. So guys, I know you're probably watching laying on your bed like this on your phone, like fuck, but just, just pause, hit the like button. Okay. Drop a comment for the algorithm too. And subscribe if you enjoy videos like this, because we have a podcast that we break down dating and lifestyle improvement every single week, new episodes. So subscribe and stick around for more. Now, you guys may also notice I'm dressed a little bit different today. It's because I tried to throw on the weirdest clothes I had and combine them in order to look more like Pete Davidson because he dresses kind of weird too. We're going to get into that. But uh, yeah, I also dried my face off too. Last week, I was looking pretty greasy. So let's jump into it. Okay, so number one reason Pete Davidson is successful with girls is he's famous, okay? And not just like TikTok or YouTube famous, but Saturday Night Live and Netflix famous. These are different tiers of fame, okay, guys? Saturday Night Live has been a show on television for something like, what, 30, 40 years now? Saturday Night Primetime Cable Slots. He is a reoccurring character. And when you're a reoccurring character of SNL, it's easy for you to hop into stand-up specials that get featured on platforms like Netflix that are just throwing money at stand-up comedians right now. So he has been seen in many households across North America just because of this high level of fame he has. Now, that's pretty obvious. He's also a multimillionaire. He's been making a lot of money for doing this the last couple of years. I think he's been in the entertainment industry for about six or seven years now. So it's kind of poetic in a way that he's finally achieving this high level of recognition. And that's usually how it goes for men. Usually guys that look like him don't do well until they get money and fame. And guess what? He's got both of them now. All right. Next, his proximity to other famous people. Don't downplay this, guys. He is always hanging out with other celebrities. He's always hanging out with other famous people. He's a guy that doesn't even have an Instagram, and we'll get to that later. But you will see him hanging out with a lot of these popular influencer celebrity people. And just because of that, there's a lot of pre-selection there. People see him with other famous people. They associate him as being valuable enough to spend time with the other famous people that, yes, he is inadvertently famous as well. A lot of this is common sense, guys. I know you're probably like, why are you saying it? Yes, I know. I'm trying to cover this from beginner to intermediate to advanced. So we're going to get to the advanced stuff. But for now, we got to stop. start with the simple stuff. Next, this is a bit of a curveball I'm going to throw to you guys right now. He has no social media presence. He has no Twitter, no Instagram, and that's big. Instagram is like the platform for narcissistic, vain people to show off their lifestyle, how good they look, and attract others sexually, okay? Girls figured it out years ago. They will objectify themselves, get millions of followers, thousands of likes, and dudes will slide into their DMs. It's a very simple strategy. Guys do it too, but it only works if you're a top percent guy. Pete Davidson, he's famous and rich, so of course it's going to work for him. But he chooses not to have Instagram. And that's actually a beautiful thing because Instagram is so fucking toxic. It's so bad for your mental health. And the girls that hit on you on Instagram are not relationship material in the first place. So what's cool about Davidson here is you cannot get a hold of him on Instagram or Twitter. You can't slide into his DMs. So because of that, all the girls that are curious about him would be interested in him seeing all the things that maybe would be red flags and turnoffs in Pete Davidson, 
They can't because he's not available like that. So for example, on dating profiles, when a girl looks at your profile, she's looking for a couple different reasons to obviously swipe right on you, but she's also looking for reasons to swipe left. So if you have too many photos or if you have a photo where you look bad or doing something she doesn't like, like hunting or fishing, boom, left swipe. The same thing applies on Instagram, but if you don't have Instagram, they can't find those disqualifiers, right? So that's an advantage Pete has. Another thing too is he has a lot of mystery to him. And I know it sounds so stupid. Oh, doesn't have an Instagram. So mysterious. The reason it's mysterious is because everybody's so used to seeing everything in other people's lives that when a guy, especially a famous guy, doesn't have social media, you're like, oh my God, I don't know anything about him. The only way people can find out about Pete Davidson is through fucking tabloids, news headlines, and videos like this. So because of that, they're actually more invested in Pete Davidson when they have to research and look him up. There's a lot of guys that have the same kind of spectacle going on. Keanu Reeves, for example. Everybody's fascinated by Keanu Reeves. He's a very shy, introverted guy. No social media or online presence whatsoever. There will be a picture of him sitting on a park bench and it'll be front page news because it's so rare to see him out and about. People are fascinated. And just by doing research on what Davidson is up to when you can't find him on Instagram, you're invested in him. And what headlines are you going to see? You're going to see Pete Davidson spotted at this place, spotted at that place. So he's always like on the run from press. So he's very elusive. He's mysterious. And when you do see him, what's he doing? Famous guy shit, okay? A new, co new comedy, new special on Saturday Night Live, new collaboration for a skit or a sketch, or he's seen with one of the girls he dates at some nice beach, right? So he's only getting headlines that make him seem even more high value. So he has a really interesting little funnel going on, and that's a lot of his status. Next, an important factor, arguably the most important factor besides fame and money, pre-selection, dating famous girls, okay? Pete Davidson has dated multiple super famous girls and the tabloids went so hard on the relationships that people are never going to forget about the girls he's dated. I'll give you an example, guys. Brad Pitt is always associated with Angelina Jolie. Brad Pitt is always associated with Jennifer Aniston. You cannot think of Brad Pitt without thinking of these two girls he's dated. Just like you cannot think of Ariana Grande without thinking of Pete Davidson. Ariana Grande, first of all, absolute bombshell. Second, famous, talented, gifted singer, dancer, songwriter, all that shit. And she has, I think, something like what, 150 million followers. Like worldwide, she sells millions of concert tickets like she is next level famous okay and a guy like pete davidson dated her so instantly every girl has to live up to ariana fucking grande this guy could retire from dating famous girls and he's still always going to be the guy that dated ariana grande okay and no girl can ever live up to ariana grande let's be honest guys i mean unless you're like a famous bombshell singer in her prime young 20s come on you're not topping Ariana. So yeah, he has insane pre-selection. Now he's dating Kim Kardashian. I mean, come on, boys. Like once again, we're going to get obviously besides the fame and money and status led to his relationships with Ariana Grande and Kim Kardashian. But like even now, the fact that he's dated them, he's never going to really have to put effort in again because he's always going to be the guy that fucked these two girls. So dude, Pre-selection at its highest level. Um, also, proximity to other famous people, actors, actresses. Obviously, like Saturday Night Live, comedy specials. Like He's just around famous people all the time. So that's pretty obvious. Pre-selection from that. Now let's get into his personality features, okay? Because I already know a lot of feminists in the comments are going to be like, Oh, I like him because he's funny and goofy. Yes. Okay, we're going to get to that, of course. So, number one, his charisma, his social skills. Pete Davidson has really good social skills. You can tell he's kind of introverted. He was definitely a weirdo slash freak growing up. I was like that too. It's just the tall skinny guy kind of vibe. But he is really good at communicating with people, multiple people at once. He can really walk into a room and convey attention from everybody. A lot of political people have the same skill. Um, he has confidence speaking in environments with a lack of connection. So for example... There was like some thriller events, like the YouTuber boxing event. 
And he went in there and there was like hundreds of people. There was a giant slapping contest. And I thought it was really awkward. I personally don't find a lot of Pete Davidson's commentary and stuff funny. It's just a acquired taste. But he was in a room full of strangers in an environment he has no familiarity with as far as I know. And he was able to confidently host and communicate with this entire room. And that's kind of like what being on Saturday Night Live is like. You're essentially communicating not only to a live audience, but you got producers, directors, you got guys backstage, behind the scenes, other actors. It takes a lot of social skills to be able to pull that off. And when that's your job, you get really good at it. So that's why he's so good at speaking and being witty, knowing what to say, knowing how to say it. And he has all these really underrated skills that only high level people have. So he can walk the walk and talk the talk, if that makes sense. He also has a relatable origin story. So he's born and raised in New York. And I think a lot of people glamorize New York, just like they glamorize Miami and Los Angeles. It's a very cool, like, uh, ooh, New York, the streets of New York, right? When you think New York, you think like, ooh, Brooklyn, dirty neighborhood, but also music, comedy, crime, arts, money, Wall Street. New York is a flex in its own, okay? So he's got a cool origin story there. Um, his father died serving as a firefighter in 9-11. Now, look, I have a parent that's passed away, but it's a little bit different to have a parent pass away from like, you know, heart attack or cancer or something versus dying in 9-11, especially at a young age. I think he was like 10 years old or something. Like, that's obviously awful and it definitely shaped his personality. He was probably very independent from a young age. As a result of that, it probably also led to him developing a lot of humor because when you're coping with pain, you tend to use humor in order to make yourself feel better, right? So that definitely shaped his personality, but it's a cool, somewhat of a underdog story, right? Like New York, father passed away young age, and his father, he wasn't like a drug dealer or something. He passed away like doing heroic shit, okay? So that's a pretty cool background story, okay? Now, personality and humor. Okay, he's a comedian, guys. He's a professional comedian. He's very good at uh, comedy performances. It's his job. He's also funny in group and crowd settings. And this is different. This is actually something that's unique about Pete Davidson because a lot of comedians are only good when it's just them on stage. That's it. Or them in their basement doing a YouTube video. That's another thing too, guys. So many of these fucking YouTuber comedian guys, like the dudes that just react to videos all day, they're super funny when they're in their basement with the camera, but you put them live on a podcast and they fucking suck, dude. They're boring. They stutter. They can't get their points across. And there is a lot of art in the edits that you'll see in YouTube videos. But Pete seems to be the real deal because he is always collaborating in other sketches, right? So he's doing different performances where he plays different characters. Some roles, he's a minor character. Some roles, he's a major character. Because of that, he knows how to work with others in a comedy setting. So not only can he be funny on his own, but he can use his wit and bounce things off of other people to also make it funny and involve them. This is a really key skill when it comes to picking up and talking to girls, guys. Being good at group dynamics, group conversations. Since it's Pete's job, it absolutely will translate into being applicable to dating as well, okay? All right, now let's get to the physical stuff. Davidson is six foot two. I think that that is a big advantage he has over many other comedians, because let's be honest, guys, if you're a comedian and you're under six foot, fuck, man. It's not as easy if you're a comedian and you're above six foot. I would actually argue that most comedians are under six foot because for men, we have an incentive to be funny because women and also men find us more valuable and want to spend more time with us when we are funny. It's a high value form of communication. So a lot of guys that are on the shorter side, they don't have as much to bring to the table. They don't naturally have the good looks or height that taller guys do, so they have more incentive to develop a sense of humor. Now, Davidson's unique because even though he's tall, he still has that huge sense of humor. Now, I imagine it's because he was introverted and awkward and weird growing up, a very unique kind of thing. Like I said, I was like that too. And also he had that background story with his father. So he probably coped a lot with humor. But at the end of the day, guys, he's six foot two, okay? So he has one of the baseline qualities of a, uh, a Chad, I suppose, above six foot. 
I hope I hope Chad never gets ruined. I know the term alpha has gotten ruined. I hope Chad never does because it's awesome. Two, he has tattoos. Girls love tattoos. There's a lot of fucking reasons that I could dive into why, but girls like tattoos. If you see a guy with tattoos, it's because girls like them. Okay, super simple. They look cool. They look badass, and we associate them with like badass figures from movies, ancient fucking warriors, like you know Samoan dudes or Japanese samurais. They'd have their whole backs painted with tattoos. Tattoos could be badass, but a lot of the time they're just used to get hot girls. All right. So Pete's got those. He also has a good jawline, guys. Okay, that's super underrated here. People are forgetting that he has a good facial shape. Now, for some reason, his face is not traditionally balanced and attractive like other faces are, but he's got the basic parameters of a strong shape. The jawline is good, and that's very important for girls, okay? The guy looks like he chews melons all day, and he's got the teeth to show for it. But what that led to is a good jawline. He's tall, and he's got tattoos. So physically speaking, he's already in the top 13 or 12% of men because only 14% of men are six feet or taller, and only three or 4% of men are six two or taller. So right away, Pete is in the top three percentile of men as far as his height. Throw in the jawline, I'd say even rarer, right? Now, he dresses very weird, okay? He's got like hype beast SoundCloud rapper outfits. I don't really know the whole appeal to this as far as like why somebody would wear it. I like to dress more low key. The only time I dress like this is if I'm doing a Pete Davidson video or I'm playing guitar by the campfire, okay? Hippie vibes um, are good for stoner dudes. It depends. Like there's many ways you can mark yourself as a guy. Pete Davidson, his style is very anti-style. Like he'll wear the Air Jordans, the flash bright colors. Um, so it's peacocking to an extent. Certain colors stand out more to people. Now, if you got an average guy and dressed him up, the way Pete Davidson dresses, he'd probably look like a goofball. You'd be like, holy fuck, dude. Why are you still dressing like you're in high school? But since he's already famous and a celebrity, people expect him to dress very flamboyant and outgoing. So that's why you'll see him wearing like these weird rings or jewelry. Or To be fair, I don't know if he wears rings or jewelry, but the tattoos, the bright colors, the weird outfits, dudes like him can get away with it because they're already this weird character. So... When you do see them, they stand out even more because they're dressed a certain way, okay? Another thing he did, he bleached his hair blonde. Loads of people on the internet love to talk shit about guys with frosted tips or bleaching their hair, but guess what? It works. Humans pay more attention to other humans when they have lighter, blonder hair. That's why so many girls bleach their hair blonde, guys. Do you think they do it just for beauty reasons? Sure, just like makeup, right? But let's be honest, the guys pay more attention to blondes. Statistics back this up. So anyways, he bleached his hair, makes him look even more unique in an extent because it's not his default hair color. And yeah, it makes him stand out. So physically, he's maxed out a lot of the um, easy things to max out. Obviously, it would be tough for him to all of a sudden just start lifting weights, eating a lot of food. But he does have the frame for it, right? He could get deezed and go up more points on an attractive scale. He could also grow like a proper fuckboy haircut, like get a fade, maybe chill out on some of the outfits he wears and kind of go a more James Bond, Peaky Blinders kind of route as opposed to the, uh, I don't know, hype beast kind of route. But physically, super underrated, okay? The face kind of weird, the lips kind of weird, I guess. But there's this thing uh, I've heard of. It. Girls are talking about it now. It's called ugly hot. It's where a guy is hot, but he's ugly and the reason he's ugly is because he's hot. I don't know, some weird shit like that. Now, I also found a thread online. And this thread is women talking about Pete Davidson and Machine Gun Kelly, another guy that's kind of out there as far as his style. And they're debating why people find uh, Davidson so attractive. I found this really good uh, comment here that I'm going to read out to you. I think Pete Davidson is facially ugly. Too fleshy looking, mouth too big, weird lumpy nose, constant derp expression. MGK is much better, like a seven. Kind of pretty face, blonde, skinny. I like his fashion. His tattoos are still all shit though. Personal opinions aside, neither are wildly outside of conventional attractiveness standards. They still have wide... Pardon me, guys. 
They still have wide jawlines, broad shoulders, are tall, in shape, if not going for the gym bro look, have hair, decent facial symmetry, etc. So there it is right there, guys. At the end of the day, if you look at Davidson, he's 6'2", strong jawline, and if he wanted to gain weight, he could fill out nicely, okay? And once again, if you're 6'2 or taller, you're in 3% of the population. On top of that, face is relatively symmetrical, good jawline. Like, if you take all the fame away, he probably could still do pretty good because at his worst, he's still at least a 5 or 6 out of 10. And then he can max that even further, all right? Same with guys like Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly is a beautiful man, dude. He has a small, weird little head, and he's very tall and dresses kind of funny, but like the guy's a good looking dude. He's got the blonde hair, the blue eyes, the sharp, clean jawline, nice skin, and yeah, he's like 6'4 or whatever, so he's in the top 1% of men. And then the tattoos are a bonus, right? So. I'll continue this comment here. They have alternative styles, but it's all in lane of cookie cutter, colored hair plus tats and piercings, guys. You'd see several times a day if you live in a city. And it's also very standard if you socialize in more artsy and music circles. Yes, that's true. They don't do anything out of the ordinary. This is true, guys. If you go downtown Toronto, downtown New York, if you go to like a hippie coffee shop, you'll see guys that look like Pete Davidson and Machine Gun Kelly. You'll see dudes with a bunch of, you know, tattoos of their favorite cooking ingredient like carrots or fucking you know a skull with some roses on their like it's very common basic um hippie guy shit and then yeah like tiktok fucking feather earrings and weird color combos like these guys are very common they're always artsy the problem with artsy guys is they don't have any money because artsy guys are so fucking obsessed with the art they're willing to live in poverty in like shithole parts of the city so that they could buy their fancy coffees and their fancy artisanal fucking crew necks and go support local art and blah, 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 blah. but they don't get to that level that these guys like davidson get to where they're famous and well known as well so that's why they end up losing out to guys that have more money because you know, as you get older, women have higher expectations. They need you to be a provider. They need you to make money, have more status. You can't just be the artsy fartsy tattoo parlor guy in your thirties, boys. Okay. Just going to be honest. So anyways, I thought that was a very interesting take here. Um, a lot of other things that girls say on here are that they're polarizing. And one thing is they're generally not attractive to most women, but for the women who are attracted to them, they're really attracted. This is a good little tidbit, guys, because this is what you want to be. Um, there's obviously things that work universally, but if you have a niche of girls, for example, if you love like rocker girls, girls that wear leather jackets and skirts, but are super hot, right? Then if you dress like Pete Davidson, those are the girls you're going to get. If you like fitness girls, you're probably going to want to be a deezed muscular guy, right? There's different roles you can play. There's archetypes and Davidson has an archetype, okay? He's got the tattoos. He wears a lot of oversized band t-shirts, which he probably couldn't even name 10 Guns N' Roses songs. And you know what, Pete, if you're listening, brother, name 10 Guns N' Roses songs and I'll take that comment back. Maybe you do. I could be wrong, but yeah, guys, like there's, there's girls that are into certain stuff and you can play up to it. Now, I will also say this. I don't think Pete Davidson consciously tries that hard to get women or girls. It just happens to be a naturally occurring phenomenon as a result of all these other things going on in his life. I guarantee if you take away the fame and money, he would probably still get girls, but it would be way less hot girls and it would be harder for him. He'd have to put in way more effort. Pete's the kind of guy that works at a kitchen in a restaurant and bangs all the chicks at work, but like he never really makes it out of the kitchen. You know, he, he's like 35 years old. He's still flipping burger patties. Everybody loves him. The people there love him. He loves the group of people that work at that bar so much. He would never leave the place and he gets pussy that way. But that's just because he's a charismatic, funny, goofy dude. And women love guys like that, especially in the short term, you know, in their twenties. But yeah, if he wasn't famous, man, he would be like a kitchen hero. That's the best way I could put it. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed that video, let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you hit the like button. The only way people get to see this is if the like button gets hit. 
And if you guys have another celebrity, famous person or whatever that you would like to see their dating strategy explained, aka how fill in the blank gets girls, drop a comment below. Join our Discord too because we have a whole group of guys and girls in there that also talk about dating and lifestyle improvement. So if you want a group of people to talk to that also are into this kind of content, join the Discord. And if you would like to pay to request a video for everybody on this channel to see and experience, be sure to go to my website, denmosocial.com. The link is in the bio. There's a form you can fill out where you can pay to have a video topic requested. What's cool about this is not only are you helping support the channel, but you're also supporting all the people that also watch the channel like yourself because when you pay to have a video topic sponsored, not only do you get to see the answer to that question answered for you in a video, but that video gets uploaded so everybody else gets to see it too. So you're actually helping other people get to see the answers you have and consume content and be entertained when you pay to request a video topic. So bros, help your other bros. Go to the link in the bio, send the money, request a video topic, and we will do that video for you and drop it so everybody else can learn from it as well. Anyways, guys, brand new podcasts every single week. So subscribe, share this with your friends, and I will see you soon. Peace. Peace.